Smallpox was one of the most frightening diseases the world has known. It killed at least 300 million people in the last century before it was eradicated. Now we turn next here to a developing story, a new scare from one of the nation's top labs about the handling of potentially deadly viruses and bacteria, anthrax, smallpox, and now the flu. But what is smallpox? Is it just some disease from the 70s that nobody knows anything about anymore? No, it's a highly deadly disease that has a possibility of making a resurgence due to the United States and Russia. Smallpox is known by its scientific name as variola. It's a highly infectious disease that was declared eradicated in 1980. The symptoms begin as a high fever, followed by aching pains and sometimes vomiting. What follows is where the disease got its name. A rash then develops across the entire body that creates raised bumps filled with pus. These pus-filled blisters then become crusty and turn into a scab until they fall off about three weeks later and the person remains infected until the very last scab falls off. Smallpox is a very serious disease and is classified as a class A, which means if a single person is infected with the disease, it is considered an outbreak. It is also very serious in the fact that around a third of the people infected with the disease die from it. Yet another complication with this disease is that there is no formal cure. There are vaccines, but they are not guaranteed to work. This in and of itself creates complications from the disease, because there is no cure. So if an outbreak were to occur, there would be no containing it, only the containments that the countries themselves have put in. But what does this have to do with us today? Let's take a look. We never thought we would be asking who put smallpox virus inside a cardboard box and left it in a storage room. Who came near it and how dangerous was it? It is also relevant in the fact that USA and Russia are the only two countries in the world that have smallpox disease samples. The one in US being the CDC in Atlanta and the Vector Labs in Russia. Both of these labs are very secure and have safety protocols to prevent any outbreaks occurring from the locations. However, this isn't to say that Russia couldn't make the smallpox disease weaponized, much like they did with the Ebola virus during the Cold War, where they took the virus and engineered it into a bomb, creating a bioweapon that could have wiped out a third of the United States population. Due to the United States' diplomatic relations with Russia being flushed on the toilet nearly four decades ago, we have no promise that Russia won't come after us. Not to mention the remnants of the Iron Curtain in Russia that still even partially exist today. Russia does not regularly attend worldwide health organization meetings, and it's been known that when they do bother to show up, they make discouraging statements. Like in 2008, Vector scientists announced they'd shifted all their smallpox from glass to plastic vials and decided to destroy nearly 25% of their smallpox stock without any warning. This again contributes to the aforementioned Iron Curtain of Russia, which can create a wave of panic across the United States, just like the Red Scare of Communism some time ago. But this isn't to say some rogue scientist couldn't steal the smallpox disease in the United States either. Much like the scientists in 2001 who stole and attacked people from their own country with anthrax, the same thing could very well happen in the United States. Some people think that destroying the smallpox virus samples would be short-sighted. Even though the disease has been declared eradicated, there's no promise that a new strain of it won't pop up somewhere in the corner of the globe. The recent finding of the smallpox virus in Maryland proves this and thus shows that there's no guarantee that the disease is completely eradicated from other countries as well. It is also stated that if we were to destroy the smallpox virus samples, that there would be no further vaccine research. Many people from this standpoint agree that we need to keep some sort of sample to be able to continue our research on the disease to see what other kind of random strains the disease might have that we haven't discovered yet. But does the risk really outweigh the reward? Researchers have had nearly four decades to study the disease, and anything they've learned up to this point 
would be all they are going to learn from the disease. The World Health Organization has declared the disease eradicated since 1979 in any countries that had disease samples, with the exception of the United States and Russia, were ordered to either destroy their samples or send them to one of the two secure labs. WHO has even come out to say that the disease has a very limited genomic diversity and share many homologies to genomes from other orthopox viruses. In views of this and the fact that variola virus has a DNA genome with the lower likelihood of major genomic variation, the advisory group of independent experts felt that there is no public health need for sequencing of additional variola virus isolates. Granted, I am no scientist, but I do know the facts of the disease. I have concluded that it would be in the safety interests of not only Russia and the United States, but the entire world to destroy the variola virus, otherwise known as smallpox. It carries with it too many risks, and risks of killing one-third of the population does not outweigh the risks of useless research. The World Health Organization is right in the fact that we have nothing else to gain from research of the disease, and all other samples need to be destroyed.